Well, live now for the latest on this to our reporter, Govan Whittles. Govan is currently outside one of the businesses that's been raided today. Govan, good afternoon to you. What do we know about what's actually happening and what this investigation is about? Stephen, we know that the Hawks have conducted three simultaneous raids this morning, uh, one in Bedford View, one in Germiston, and then the other at this property in Edenvale, uh, where we are. This property, we understand, being one of the businesses uh, that may be linked to the ANC Ikruleni uh, Treasurer General. Now, this investigation relates to that one billion rand that was uh, siphoned from the Gauteng Health Department in connection with the Tembisa Hospital. That fraud being uh, flagged by whistleblower Babita Diokran, who was uh, brutally assassinated uh, outside of her child's school. And we know that the Hawks, uh, as well as the SIU, have been investigating uh, one of the companies uh, that belonged to the Ikruleni Treasurer General of the ANC, Selo Sokoko. And uh, the investigation related to the overpricing um, of services and goods. That being raised by Jack Bloom, uh, who is the Democratic Alliance's representative in the Gauteng legislature responsible for oversight on health. Uh, Jack Bloom having alleged that uh, Selo Sokoko's companies had provided services and products to the Gauteng Health Department, uh, to the Tembisa Hospital, at massively inflated rates, um, that he had pocketed most of the money. Jack Bloom alleging that um, Selo Sokoko's companies provided V-neck jerseys for 11,500 rand each, rain suits for 17,000 rand each, um, and a kilogram of buravors for up to 500 rand uh, each, um, and that he was providing these services uh, and was paid despite the flags being raised by Babita Diokaran. Now, News24 has done most of the investigation into the widespread corruption that Babita Diokaran had uncovered. And what we see today is a raid by the Hawks, which has confiscated documentary evidence, uh, digital devices, um, as well as other evidence which the Hawks say will help in their investigation, which is all it is at this point, Stephen. Uh, the Hawks stressing that they've not arrested anyone here. They've not pressed any charges either. What they're doing is trying to collect evidence which they hope will lead to the arrests of significant persons. But this, of course, uh, being a uh, public interest matter uh, due to the fact that the businesses and homes are being linked to the ANC Ikruleni Treasurer General. Govan Whittles, thank you very much indeed. Well, more on this now. Professor Alex van den Heerfe is a professor at the Witt School of Governance, also is an expert on healthcare systems and a member of the Progressive Health Forum. Professor, good afternoon to you. Well, as we now know, News24 describing the properties as being owned by someone linked to politics in Ekuruleni and, in fact, the ANC. What does this tell us about what's been happening in this story and how this uh, corruption, alleged corruption, was working? Well, it suggests that uh, the way in which governance operates within the Gauteng province is impacting on, uh, on the people who are appointed into the system and how transactions are monitored and dealt with. Because what was clear in this particular case is that the, the supply chain manager, uh, Babita Diokaran, flagged all of these but was still instructed to make the payments. In relation to this particular politically uh, connected individual, uh, and as treasurer within the ANC is obviously linked to money making for the political party, suggests that there is a clear and proper link that would have to be investigated and uh, those transactions should never have been permitted to proceed. But this is also not the only party who has been part of siphoning funds out of Tembisa Hospital. And, um, and the, 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 the rather, uh, let's say, concerning issue around all of this is how slow the provincial government has been to actually follow up on any of these particular issues, suggesting that there are massive conflicts of interest all the way up into the provincial ANC. Uh, so, I mean, the whole thing here is this has been a long-running investigation. It's taken a long time. Now, there could well be legal reasons for that. I mean, getting evidence is not something I know anything about. But the fact is, this is a, a matter of burning public interest. We need to know what happened at the Tembisa Hospital. Need I remind anyone 
This was one billion rands worth of government money being spent during a pandemic, being spent very quickly, being spent, we understand, in a suspicious way, and being spent in a way that resulted in the death of Babisa Diakaran. And it's also important to note that Timbisa Hospital is being reported as being in a shoddy state with patients sleeping on the floor and, in, in essence, inadequate expenditure being uh, sort of deployed in the hospital itself for the patients. So essentially this money is being stolen from the public and putting patients in harm's way. So there is not only the murder of Babita Diokaran, but potentially the deaths of patients and severe harm to patients who should have received proper care from a properly financed facility. And it's very, very obvious to pick up this kind of deviation in expenditure in a hospital such as Tembisa and the fact that there was a complete, complete silence from within the province um, suggests that the entire provincial health department is, is uh, misgoverned at this point in time and it's, and it's incredibly concerning. Well, we've seen so much focus on the Gauteng Provincial Health Department. We all remember just a weeks ago, just last week, in fact, we were talking about the Rahima Musa Mother and Child Hospital. Uh, we've never been able to understand why it is that things are so badly managed. Are you suggesting we're beginning to get a bit closer to understand why it is that it may not just be because people don't know what they're doing, but for other reasons? Well, it's clear that there is, uh, uh, that there is a very difference, uh, uh, there's a, a severe problems in the way finances are managed within the province, because sometimes it's indicated that the, that the problem is related to resource constraints. Well, at the end of the day, there are resource constraints if a large part of the budget is basically stolen and misallocated. And what will also happen is that the people who would be prepared to arrange for that to happen, who are placed in leadership positions, are the kinds of people who are not going to actually run facilities very well, even when they're not stealing the money. So this is, this is a real problem. And when you look at the, um, the overall finances for the problem, they've got billions of rands worth of accruals. That's, that's where they haven't actually managed to pay for contracts and uh, a, any expenses that they've incurred when they've purchased products. So the, they've got billions of rands of unpaid bills on top of allowing billions of rands worth of money to be approved as transactions in cases like this. So it appears systematic. And what we've seen at Rahima Musa in terms of the uh, audit, we will find in all the provincial hospitals in Gauteng and many of the other provinces. Uh, so it's, it's obviously a matter of concern. This looks systemic. And the failures of performance at these hospitals are not related to resource constraints. They are resource constraints, but they are massively more severe than they should be because of this theft and mis basically mismanagement. Professor, we know that bringing these cases is very difficult. I mean, let's just look at the Zondo Commission for a moment. We see findings against people and really no cases against them or very few cases actually being brought against them, despite the fact we've all seen the evidence and their defense. We have this raid now. Do you believe there will actually be justice for Tim, in the Timbisa Hospital case? Well, I think that there wouldn't have been any even get got to this point if it wasn't for News 24, which is really concerning because it means that that's what it takes to get our public um, uh, sort of accountability structures to kick in. Now, if we also had to look just before we get to criminal cases, there is also the matter of whether or not proper disciplinary procedures have been followed against people who clearly are guilty of, of misconduct within the department. Well, nobody has been. You've had two people who've been on almost perpetual suspension. One of the natural sort of consequences of these is that people who are in many cases um, uh, uh, where, where people are too scared to take forward issues of misconduct, they just get put on suspension indefinitely. Um, and their cases are not pursued. Well, there is enough evidence, in my view, um, to proceed on, on a disciplinary basis against all the parties involved, that supply chain man people within Tembiso Hospital, the CEO of that hospital, um, the s people with, within the CFO's office, the CFO who's on suspension, who should be fired, um, all of them can be removed and the head of department who is responsible for a failure, a fantastic failure of governance overall within the province. So all of the, it's actually very difficult not to see this kind of thing happening, which means when it does happen, a whole bunch of people should actually lose their jobs immediately. Now, none of that has happened. So I would distinguish between the misconduct issues that require disciplinary processes and the criminal processes which might take a little bit longer. 
what we've seen is that the disciplinary processes just never conclude. Professor Alex Sondenhefer, thank you. Professor at the Witt School of Governance, expert on healthcare systems and also a member of the Progressive Health Forum. Do appreciate the time. Well, more reaction to the story as it develops. Govan Whittle is still on station for you this afternoon outside one of those residences where that Raiden connection with the Dembisa Hospital scandal occurred.